So the next three videos are going to be the process of building my newest customer project. And that project is a mid-century style, what I'm calling a mid-century uh, modern built-in. So it's basically a nine foot piece of furniture. There's one section that I took apart to make it easier to finish, which will go in the middle here. Each section is, is three feet wide. So it comes apart, uh, apart into three parts. Um, uh, like I said, this is going to be a three part series. The first part is mainly going to showcase building these outer frames. There's uh, six of these, two for each east section, and those are mortised and tenoned together. But then the, the bulk of the work in this first video is you're not gonna be able to see it in the intro, but you'll see it in the video. All of these runners are dovetailed together on the inside uh, face of these. I did that so that these uh, thin strips of wood can't pull apart over time. Those dovetails will keep everything square and also so that um, I didn't have to use hardware. Mid-century modern is, is a nice challenging uh, style to recreate, but it does have, like I said, its challenges and visible hardware can, can easily ruin the look of that. So I spent the time to put dovetails in there to avoid having to have screws or anything like that on the piece. So that's gonna be the bulk of the first video. Um, the second video will be adding the shelves once again, I had to come up with a way to do that because I didn't want to put screws through the bottoms of these runners. It wouldn't matter on these lower shelves, but as they get up higher, you would see them. You could plug them, but I also did not want to do that. As well as making the desk, which is behind me, that goes about 30 inches high in the middle, as well as the um, cabinet that gets mounted up top. And then the third video is going to be... Um, odds and ends making the drawer for the the box and, and stuff like that as well as putting some finish on it right now this has one coat of finish on it and it should get at least two more before delivery so this was the original uh, photo the customer sent me the only thing that really wasn't on there were dimensions the dimension seat she customized you could kind of see them all over all over that uh, piece of paper there so once I had that, I could start building this. The frame of this is all going to be hardwood walnut. So that's what I'm trying to show you with, with one hand is, is the walnut I got. The lumber guy I use, he actually, it worked out perfectly. He had this quite, quite a large stack of walnut that would are, was already faced on three sides, which worked out perfectly for me because while I do enjoy, um, getting lumber all ready to go for these projects it's kind of a pain in my in my shop because it's so small on these longer boards that it was nice to already have that done and he still gave me a pretty decent price on it so i could get right to work cutting all this stuff down so what i'm doing is just ripping these into two inch wide strips um, the the end frames for this piece the the strips are turned on edge and they're they're all two inches wide once I had those, I can flip them over and rip them down the middle. Now this lumber was a little over an inch and a half uh, thick, so I cut this about in a half, and with the, the loss from the blade, I was left with pieces that were a little over three quarters of an inch, which was perfect. So I'm just making, I cut a little over 12 of these because I'll use other parts of this for other, other pieces of the design, but I needed 12 of these long pieces to make, make those edge panels. So you could kind of see that I really need to sharpen my blade. There was a ton of burn marks on this stuff. It would have been smart to have done it before I ripped it, ripped it all down. So then I laid out all the mortises. The, there's only two joining pieces on this, as in the photo. So I copied that because the customer wanted it pretty close to, to what was in the photo. So there's a, a piece at the bottom, which will kind of designate where the first bottom shelf starts, and a piece at the top, and the top was a little bit taller than the top shelf. So I left a little bit of an overhang at the top. You can see I'm not going all the way to the edge. And then I'll just trim the top down later. So this is a 3 8 inch mortising bit. I marked all of my mortises before I started. When I have a ton of these to do, um, there's, let me see, 12 sides, so 24 mortises. It could get a little confusing which sides uh, going where so I marked them all and then just and then just mortised out all those bits now this is um, like I said a 3 8 inch bit and I kept it I'm not gonna have any shoulders at the top so it, it's a 2 inch mortise 
So now I can go through and cut those pieces that I'm going to put tenons on the edge to join these, these sides. So you, I, you can see I just have a stop set up. And then I cut a scrap piece with a tenon on it. I use my radial arm saw for these. I just raise the blade and, and get cut a couple scrap pieces until I get the thickness just right and as well as the depth. And then I could go through and cut all of those. As you can see, this is cutting the tenons. It's just a series of curves, and then you could clean up the kerf material. Now, on the mortising jig, once you cut your mortises, if you go back through, you could clean up the joint really well. I find that to be extremely tedious, so I usually just leave the joints, as you could see in the last clip, pretty rough, and then I'll clean them up with a chisel. I prefer that over, over um, going back over it with the mortising machine. So you can see this is cleaning up those joints with the chisel because there's there's always a little bit of leftover material in there. So now that I have my, my cross members, I'm just going through with all of these mortises, cleaning them up, making sure the tenons fit. And then once they do, I could I can move them into a stack. So obviously there's one on the bottom and one on the top. And once I have a nice tight fit, I can move to the other end. And then that is what the stack looks like. So like I said, there's six of those. And then I can glue these up. Now I don't have, the one uh, problem I had with this project was, was clamps. I didn't have a ton of clamps. So what I did was I glued them one at a time and clamped them in a stack of two. So each two is clamped together. And then I made them in one big stack. Whenever I'm making multiples, I like to stack them on top of each other because if you'll be able to notice differences really quickly when they're stacked on top of each other. Um, if they're all the same size, you're pretty much good to go. I checked square on these, but these actually turned out pretty nicely. And then I could add them to the stack. So here's the stack over here. See, I'm kind of clamping two at once. And then I weighted all these at the end and let them dry overnight. So let's go ahead and put in clamps on the other side. You can see the bottom of the stack is already clamped. So then the next day to clean up all those burn marks, I knew there was going to be a ton of sanding on this piece, so I tried to do it as I went so I didn't have a bunch to do at the end. So since these kind of stuck together a little bit because of the glue, I kept the top like that so I could sand them real easily with the belt sander without them moving on me. And then I could flip them over and sand the other side, and then I could go through and remove all those burn marks from ripping them down with the orbital sander. So this is about 80 grit I'm using right now and then I could just cut the tops down to size. And then those edges are pretty much pretty much ready. The bottoms of these, like most mid-century modern furniture, is tapered, so I just kind of eyed this up. I usually come in about three quarters of an inch on the bottom, and then usually I cut these also on the radial arm saw, and I should have cut these before I glued them together. It would have made my life a lot easier. But now that they were glued together, it would have just been a little hard to prop them up. So I decided to hand saw these. So I'm hand sawing that taper and then I'll clean them up uh, with the orbital sander. And they actually turned out pretty good for hand sawing. So the edges of these pieces are rounded over. So this is just a matter of putting a round over bit in my, my router table and rounding over all the sides. The inside frame is not rounded over, just the edges. You couldn't see it in the original source photo, but they're, they're curved in there, which kind of creates a nice look because they're going to be butted up against each other. So like I said, all four sides are like this. And then I'll have to take the fence off in order to round over the top and the legs. So there's the fence off, and I can do the top, both sides of the top. And then I could also taper taper the legs. So at this point, the legs started to look really nice with that round over detail. So all four sides of the legs as well. And then um, since this lumber is a little wonky because it's very long and very thin, there was a little bit of cleanup to do. So I just used a hand plane to kind of, there's a couple little undulations and bumps on these pieces just to clean them up. So then this is the, the one kind of creative aspect of this I had to think about. I didn't want hardware in these pieces. And as you can see, the runner in the front of those is underneath and in the back is up top. So I created this jig that is an inch that cuts a dovetail and there's a th uh, the three quarter inch offset for the shelf in the middle. So these are an inch, three quarter and an inch. And I had to calculate the bushings in order to get all this math. 
So that was kind of a pain, but once I had it, it worked. And then I just made a long version of this jig with two cleats on the end so I can move it back and forth to either side and cut those dovetails in the exact same spot on all of my pieces. So this is just showing how I made that jig. You can see I have all my pieces lined up showing which is going to be the back of the shelf, which is going to be um, the shelf shelf and then the front. Now I made this out of finger jointed pine that I had laying around my shop. I wish I had a piece of plywood long enough. I actually ended up breaking part of this jig because finger jointed pine is not super strong. So if you want to make something like this, I recommend plywood. I was able to fix it and continue working, but it, it was very fragile. So once I had those cut on the one side, I can move them over to the other. And I believe these were also about an inch deep. So that is clamped in place. Now this bottom one, I'm not gonna be able to cut because the, the brackets there. So I'll just put a mortise there. So then this is just showing you the bushing I'm using for the first one. And it's a straight cutting bit. Um, when I used dovetails in the other, in another video, someone recommended um, Removing the bulk of the material with the straight cutting bit first before using the dovetail bit so it wasn't so hard on my router and I thought it was a great suggestion so luckily I have two routers so I could have two set up. If I had to keep switching out the bits I wouldn't have done it this way it would have been a pain getting everything exact the next time around but removing the bulk of the material with the straight cutting bit and then coming back in with the dovetail bit worked really well. And um, you could see before I showed you the bushings I used and the bit sizes I used in order to get this to work. So you could see the bulk of the material is removed and then I could come through with the dovetail bit which is set at one depth and, and, and make those dovetails. I believe I said this in the intro, the reason I wanted to make these out of dovetails was so that these, these two end frames can't pull apart over time. Um, I recommended to the customer to make these shelves fixed and I'm happy that they agreed to do that because once I started ripping down these materials it really started to kind of bend and, and bow quite substantially so if these shelves weren't fixed in place I think over time th this, this piece would have really started to move around on them so with the fact that this is all going to be glued into place and it's all with dovetails it should last um, a very long time. So you can see with the front cut and the back cut, if there's a piece of plywood going across the middle, how those one will sit on the top and then underneath the back. So that was kind of the challenge of getting that. But once I had the math figured out, I could go through and do it pretty quickly. Two of these are cut the exact same way. The other two have to be cut um, the opposite. Otherwise, you'll have four identical ones and they won't match up. So all I did to solve this problem was I took the jig and I just flipped it upside down. So now I was cutting a lower portion on the front side and a higher portion on the back side so that they fit together. Um, think of it almost as like opening a book. If you have four identical pages and you go to close them, it won't match. So I just had to move the cleat to the other side so it would work. You can see when they're laid out uh, much better what I'm talking about how the the left the far left side of one leg matches the far right side of the other leg if i didn't do that i would have um four four far left sides that were identical and it, it wouldn't work so then it was the same once i had the jig flipped it was the same process just going through removing the bulk of that material and then coming back in with the dovetail bit and then i had all my notches It's just kind of what that looks like for people making jigs figuring out how to make jigs is sometimes the hardest process of any project but um, they're really quite cool and these bushings I've been using them a lot for a lot of my projects once you kind of figure out offsets and, and how they work they're just completely um, a time saver and then like I said I could just flip this to the front and then do that and then I'll have have all my panels so with them side by side, you can see exactly how that shelf will sit in that piece. So then what I did was I made two test dovetails. I kind of hand cut these and butcher them on the table saw. I just wanted to make sure that my alignments worked. And then I set these in place and put them together so you could kind of see how they'll work. And then that is going to be the end of this video just because the portion of adding the shelves would have made this probably a 25 minute video so that's where I'm gonna leave it 
and could see how they're going to sit in there nice and flat. I was very happy at this point. 